Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminal Ollie, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, it's happened again. Loads of books have ended up in my house, so I'm going to show them to you. So yeah, I wasn't intending to do another book haul video for a while, but um, when new books come in, I kind of pile them up separately from my other books, so I know which books I've got, you know, for my next book haul video. And recently, that pile has just grown, has just grown and grown and grown to the point where it's um, it's it's about to fall over. Um, so I need to talk to you about these books so I can get them off the uh, the book haul pile and, and onto the shelves. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a number of different things to, to talk about to you today. Um, a, as usual, some of them are books I bought myself, so I can I, you know I can only blame myself for those. Some of them are ones where uh, you know where people have sent them to me, which is which is very kind of them. Um, and some of them are ones where like the publisher or whatever has has been in touch and said, um, you know, do you want this book? But also. Um, I've got a few books this week that just turned up that, that I, I have no recollection of the publisher approaching me and saying, would you like these books? They just turned up. So I've, I've considered myself blameless for those ones. Um, anyway, they're, they're kind of stacked up here, not really in a particular order. Um, so I'm just going to start talking about them and, and we'll see how we go. So first up, we have a book I first heard about on the channel, The Bookish Knitter. So if you if you know me at all, you know I like books with a slightly weird, exploitative feeling uh, concept. Uh, and, and this is definitely one of those. So this is a book called Saving Marina by Laurie Robinson, uh, which is a, a, a Harlequin romance. This is a, a UK Mills and Boone edition, but a Harlequin romance, but set during the Salem Witch Trials which is a wonderfully trashy concept, and I can't wait to read it. The one thing I would say is, I think this cover, so I think the cover image, let's just focus on the cover image, I think the cover image is, is really good. It's like classic, you know, kind of Harlequin, um, a Harlequin romance kind of cover. They both look a little bit concerned, understandably, because it's the Salem Witch Trials. Um, but, you know, they're both, you know, attra attractive looking younger people, so, you know, Good, good Harlequin romance cover. But I think the font is terrible. It's, it's really hard to read. Um, so yeah, bad bad marks, uh, Mills and Boone, for that, for that font choice. It's awful. Right, anyway, <laughs> let's continue. So next up, um, this one I do consider myself largely blameless for because I don't think anyone would blame me for buying it in the circumstances in which I bought it. So let me tell you about those circumstances. So a few weekends ago, I was helping my dad put some furniture together over at his house. And when I went to the station to get the train home, um, I saw this in the little station bookshop. So I don't know if other countries have this, but in the, in the UK, quite often at train stations, you will get a, um, a little, like a bookshelf with some secondhand books on it and an honesty box, like run by a local charity. Um, so I chanced upon this glorious Faber paperback edition of Lord of the Flies by William Golding, so a, a movie tie-in edition, um, and it's in, like in really great condition, um, and I paid like a quid for it. You know, who who would not have bought that? It's just gorgeous. Um, right, moving on then, uh, a bit more Mills and Boone. I think I got this at the same time as uh, Saving Marina actually, and I think it was one of those eBay sellers where you got a discount if you bought two books. So so I got another Mills and Boone, so I got this double. I really like these Mills and Boone Heroes doubles, uh, where you get two completely different and unrelated uh, kind of romantic suspense books. So this one has got a book uh, by an author called Juno Rushton with a fantastic title of Rogue Christmas Operation. I don't know what rogue Christmas operation means. Is it like a surgeon doing a, 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 you know, some surgery that's outside the normal rules and it happens to be at Christmas time? I don't know, but it's a great title. And then it's also got uh, Canine Patrol. So I've, I've realised that whilst I'm not necessarily a dog lover, I'm more of a cat person, I really like romance books that feature dogs. Not as like the couple, but you know, as ancillary characters. Um, so this one is by Julie Miller, um, who is an author who I've read at least one Harlequin romance by. I can't remember which one it was, but I remember enjoying it. So that looks good. Um, next up, so Andrew from the channel It Came From The Page um, has a Patreon, which I'm a member of. Um, and for his patrons in November, he's doing a, an event called, a reading event called Novelisation November. So Andrew, if you don't know, is 
a fantastic channel. I'll link to him in the description. You should check him out. Um, but he's really into like novelization. So, you know, book versions of movies, video games, TV shows, and so on. So he's he's running this event, which is based around novelizations. So there's various different prompts for it. Uh, one of which is, the, so the prompt is a, a novelization of a movie that never got made. Um, and one he suggested in his video was this, uh, Splinter of the Mind's Eye by Alan Dean Foster. So this is a Star Wars novel that was published. So I think it's the first Star Wars novel other than Star Wars that was published, if that makes sense. But it's based on like a treatment that George Lucas had come up with, apparently, according to Andrew, and I didn't realise this. It was kind of like... His, a, way, a, a screenplay or an idea for a, for a movie he had using some of the same characters if Star Wars hadn't been a success. So if the first Star Wars movie hadn't been a success and he hadn't been able to get the budget to continue the series as, as we know it today, he had some ideas for like lower budget movies he could make and Splinter of the Mind's Eye was one of those. Now, this is also the first book I can ever remember DNFing. So I had a copy, this same edition, um, not the same copy, but the same edition, when I was a kid, um, and uh, never read it. I think I started it and just couldn't get into it. So so never finished it. So it's it's like a, I suppose in a way, it's a bit of a white whale for me, in that I feel, now that he's mentioned it again, I thought, well, I've got to get that and, and finish it. So when I got that off eBay, the same seller, uh, well, not the same seller, it was like a Two, two for one thing. Well, not two for one. It was a job lot. There were two books in it. That's what I mean. The other one was Star Wars. This lovely old uh, sphere uh, science fiction edition of the Star Wars novelization, which says George Lucas on the cover, but was actually written by Alan Dean Foster, who wrote this one. Now, this is a book I read time and again when I was a kid. Um, I was not able to see Star Wars at the cinema. Um, we didn't have a video player, so it was only when Star Wars finally came on TV that I actually saw it. The first Star Wars film I actually saw at the cinema was Return of the Jedi. Um, but I read this time and again, and I fondly remember the um, colour stills from the movie with little descriptions and things like that in the middle. This was, like, back in the day, that was, like, you know, primo movie novelisation, was you'd get these lovely... Uh, still images from the film as well. So really looking forward to, to reading this again and going on a, on a trip down memory lane at some point. The other book I've got for Novelisation November um, is this Alien the Cold Forge by Alex White. So this is like an alien spin-off novel or a, a novel set in the Aliens universe. Um, Andrew really, really writes this book. He says it's absolutely fantastic. I've read I've read a few um, like Aliens-based books over the years, including uh, the V. Castro one, which is up there on the shelf somewhere, uh, which I enjoyed. But yeah, Andrew says this one is especially good. So looking forward to giving that a try. Uh, right, moving on then. So I've uh, got some manga for you. Um, so Blood on the Tracks, uh, the manga series, is is now complete. So there, are, there, there will be 16 volumes in total of it. And they have finished publishing them in, in Japan at least now. In the in the UK, I think only the first 14 volumes are available physically. So I've got, I had the first 10 already. I've just bought 11 through to 14. Uh, so let me show you those. So this is a fantastic manga series. When I finish reading it, I will do a video talking about the whole series. So that's volume 11. This is volume 12. By, I forgot to say, Shuzo Oshimi. Uh, this is volume 13. Um, and this is volume 14, which sadly is a bit, it's got stamped on by the postman or something like that. So it's got a bit of a wrinkle at the top there. But anyway. Um, right, let's get into some that have been sent to me by publishers now. Um, so this is the one of the ones I have no recollection of asking for. Um, it just turned up. <laughs> it just, it just turned up. So this is Deliver Me by El Nash, which reading the blurbs on the back sounds really good. So it's a kind of body horror type thing, I think. Um, it's got you know gl glowing reviews from a number of different writers, including I notice here Brian Evanson, who is an author I'd never read until I read a short story of his recently, and it was one of the best horror short stories I've ever read. So I I trust his opinion. Um, so yeah, this was sent to me by uh, the publisher Unnamed Press um, from Los Angeles. So that's kind of I, I think that's kind of cool. So this is like an American edition of a book that's come all the way from LA to, to me here on the south coast of the UK. It's got a great cover as well, isn't it? That cover's like slightly unsettling in ways I can't quite put my finger on. Um, so yes, I shall I shall make time to read that at some point. Um, 
Another one from a publisher, and this one I did request, uh, is Mayfly by CJ Lead from uh, Titan Books. So this seems to be getting really good press. It just looks like a fun um, horror novel. I love the cover. I, I've eaten them, so I can't show them to you. But Titan also included a few like chocolate eyeballs, like uh, looking very much like that one on the cover there. Um, so yeah, they included some chocolate eyeballs in the in the kind of package as well. So that was that was good of them. And I've just remembered there's another book down there which I haven't got out. Uh, speaking of fun packaging uh, from publishers, I also got this one, uh, which is a new book by Joe Nesbo. Um, so this came in this kind of weird box, which I think is supposed to be, you can see there's like a phone box on the cover, and I think a phone is central to the book. So I think this is supposed to be like an emergency phone box. Not sure, I'm not sure it quite works. I prefer the I prefer the chocolate, but in, inside the box anyway, you can see The Night House by Joe Nesbo. Fantastic cover. So I've not read Joe Nesbo. So Joe, Joe Nesbo is best known for... So he's a Scandinavian crime writer. Best known for his series of novels who, about a detective called... And I, I think this is part of the reason I haven't got into them. I, I started reading the first one. And for some reason I just couldn't get on with it. But the, the detective's name is Harry. And I think you pronounce the surname Hole. It's like H-O-L-E. So it's spelt like... The English word whole. So, so my juvenile mind has meant that I translate that detective's name as Harry. Sounds a bit like Harry. Whole. Which is... I should be ashamed of that, shouldn't I? Anyway, so Joe Nesbo has now written a standalone horror novel as well. Which hasn't been great, getting great reviews. But um, I do think it's a fantastic cover. And it came in this weird box. So I, I, will, I will read it at some point. Um... Right, moving on then. Uh, here's one. Uh, yeah, I'll move swiftly on from uh, from that. Um, so here's one that was sent to me by the author. Um, so this looks fun and just a fantastic presentation as well. So for an independently published book, um, I think the presentation of this is is wonderful. So it's come from an author in Holland. Uh, it's called The Outfield Player and Hot Kiana 97 uh, by an author called Ed Gould. Um, so yeah, it's got a lovely kind of vintage style to the uh, to the cover here. Um, so yeah, it's supposed to be kind of literary fiction, but but with a you know kind of pulpy crime vibe. So sound sounds fun. Um, I then have another one from a publisher. Um, so albeit um, Anne from the channel Anne Novella um, arranged for the publisher to send me a copy. I've actually read this already. This is Julian by Fleur Puretz. I've I've gushed about it in wrap up videos already, so I won't talk about it too much. But a wonderful, very moving uh, memoir. Um, some more uh, that just turned up uh, without me asking for them. So a while ago, a publisher of I think they published Korean manga contacted me and and I said yeah send me send me a couple of things which which they did and I read them and didn't particularly <laughs> didn't particularly enjoy them they clearly didn't watch my video where I said I didn't particularly enjoy them because they just sent me some more stuff um albeit this is all different series from the ones they sent me before so maybe I will enjoy these more anyway the the things they have sent me are um Tokyo Babylon and that's a lovely cover at least I don't I've got no idea what any of these are about but um that's a lovely cover. And then three that are clearly in some way related, but I can't figure out how. So they are uh, Associate Professor uh, Akira Taka, how do I say it? Taka Tsuki's Conjecture, number one. And then Associate Professor um, Akira uh, Takasuki's Conjecture, number one again, but uh, Folklore Studies. And then Associate Professor Akira Taka, Takasugi's Conjecture, uh, number two, um, The Supernatural Hides in the Cracks, which is a good subtitle. Um, oh, these are... Uh, I'm ashamed to say, I didn't actually realise these are actually novels. So these are, I guess, what you would call light novels. I wonder if they're all novels. So those ones are. This one, I think... Oh, OK. Right. OK, I get it now. So this is manga. And these two are novels. So these look quite interesting and quite fun. Okay, I shall give these a try at some point, as I always say, um, and let you know what they're like. Um, and then the final one, this again has a really cool cover. This is Glitch uh, by Shima Shinya. Um, and this looks like a, a, an, an interesting one. I quite like the kind of art style in this. It's kind of very cartoony. Um, but yeah, I love, the, I love the use of colour and things like that on that cover. And then finally... I was 
delighted the other day to discover that a new independent bookshop has opened in the town that I live in. Uh, so it's called Chapter 34. I will try and remember to leave a link to their website in the description for the video. Um, but yeah, I live in a, a small town. Um, we don't have, um, you know, we haven't had a proper bookshop as long as I've lived here, like a proper new bookshop. So we have a WH Smiths, which if you live in the UK, you will know is a, you know, a, a, a chain of shops that sell, they do sell books um, and they sell stationery and things like that. But I kind of don't consider them to be a proper bookshop. They sell magazines, books and stationery, basically. Um, and we did for a long time have a secondhand bookshop, which was quite good, um, which specialised in kind of military type stuff but sold you know fiction and things like that as well but anyway this new independent bookshop has opened up i went in there um at the weekend it's absolutely lovely had a really good chat with the people who are running it they've got a nice little like cafe at the back they've got an area upstairs where they're doing like yoga classes and, and like reading groups and things so it looks wonderful um, and i really i really hope they are successful um so i bought a i thought i thought i can't go in and not buy something so i bought a couple of things so i bought the moonstone by wilkie collins so i've not talked about this on the channel before but um in november um i've been asked by um Anne from the channel Anne Novella uh, and Micah from the channel Micah Cummins to be part of their ongoing series they're doing called Classics and Company. So they've been doing a thing where they read a classic book each month um, with a guest host um, and then you know discuss it as a as, you know as a group really. Um, so I think I think we'll do a live discussing the Moonstone um, and you know there'll be a group read and there's a Discord where people can discuss it and things like that. So yeah, because this is a you know one of the classics of detective fiction, often considered to be the first detective novel. They asked me if I'd like to to be the the kind of co-host for that. Um, so yeah, I, I I have got it on my Kindle, but I thought this this very nice Penguin edition. Um, would look good on the shelves and uh, would be a, a more enter well hopefully a more enjoyable way um, of reading it so and I need to because I'm like talking about it with other people I need to be kind of you know make sure I'm paying attention to be on the money don't I so I may even get some of those little colored tabs and like put put those in and uh, I don't know we'll see um and then I also got uh, Wanderers by Chuck Wendig. So I've been meaning to read this since it came out. It's supposed to be really good. It got great reviews. I've read one other book by Chuck Wendig, which I've now completely forgotten the name of, but it was kind of a YA crime thing, which I really, really enjoyed. Um, so this is like an end of the world type book. It's supposed to be really good. It's a, it, it's a, a, a definitely a tome. It's like 800 pages. Um, but yeah, it looks like a good a good one maybe to take on holiday next summer. Um, or maybe read over the Christmas period, actually. It's a good good book to sink into um, during during Christmas. So yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to that one too. So yes, uh, a little unexpected book haul. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it interesting. Let me know if you've read any of the books I showed and if you think there are any I should read sooner rather than later. Um, and as always, thanks very much for watching. I hope you're safe and well out there. I hope you're reading good stuff. And I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.